Yeah, and the whole record is, uh, I guess, uh, us kind of learning how to write and work together as a band and produce stuff. Uh, most of it was recorded in our bedroom. Uh, and the new one, I guess, we sort of toured for probably three years or so, maybe, yeah, somewhere around there, um, just in our own country, then around uh, Europe and UK and the States as well. So after all that time, I guess we've sort of developed a much more of a band kind of unit since then, and, and the new record perhaps sort of reflects that a bit more. But in terms of kind of the direction, I think, um, just from the type of music we're listening to, um, perhaps more sort of psychedelic and kind of left of centre pop music this yeah. time around. Um, still with sort of dance influence too, but a lot more kind of layered sort of guitar sounds and um, really even kind of gets quite sort of shoegazy in, in parts as well. Well we just, um, well I guess with our label, um, that kind of thrown around a few ideas for producers. Um, a lot of whom um, we weren't particularly excited about. Um, and I guess they were looking for someone that had done some big records um, and we were looking for someone that we were interested in working with, obviously. Um, so trying to find someone that, that fitted those two kind of characteristics was a bit of a challenge, but Tim Goldsworthy was a name that we kind of threw out there and they seemed to be excited about it. We were excited about it because we love all the DFA stuff and all his own stuff as well. And um, just sent him some tracks and he, he loved them. He kind of just knew straight away kind of where we were coming from. The, sort of, you know, I guess the influences on a lot of the, the tracks, I like picked out even specific records of artists that we loved and just sort of said, yeah, kind of, this is, this is what I'm hearing and it's like, yeah, totally, that's kind of what we're listening to. So, um, so yeah, kind of, um, yeah, really felt an instant kind of connection with him musically and we chatted for, you know, sort of a good hour or so about just music and, you know, stuff that we liked and, yeah, it just sort of came about that way really, so fairly organically, I suppose. very much, very different to, um, yeah, the dance music's very different to over here or even in Australia. There's, um, the clubs just aren't, there's not going to be as many sort of big clubs no. as mm. you get over here or even in Australia. We can go to any clubs, or we went to like the Nerds also. Yeah, we have been over there a bunch of times, and even, you know, the, the stuff that we you know, have gone to is not sort of smaller, and, yeah. you know, it's still like uh, original disco rather than... Yeah, so okay. like anyway. definitely they're more about their kind of musical traditions than kind of just the latest thing, which seems to be the case like in London. I think, um, I, mean, I think there's always been sort of good music in Australia. I think perhaps um, at the moment there's a bit of a zeitgeist or something, you know, as far as artists working in our kind of vein of music. Because there's certainly a lot of people that, um, you know, we play shows with and, and know really well and good friends with that, um, that are sort of having quite a bit of success. But I, th I think also just, you know, MySpace, the internet, blogging, all that sort of thing has really um, opened up the doors for people everywhere to kind of um, be heard. Um, whereas I think previously there just wasn't the sort of outlet, like even if you were writing some crazy music in Australia, you know, say in the 80s or whatever, you know, you might struggle to get it heard. Yeah, yeah so, so it kind of, um, I think a lot of it's just the technology. Okay. Um, perhaps combined with actually some people doing some good stuff too. But also it's hard to say how sort of, um, how what are the Australian scene is perceived overseas, you know, you get some sense of sort of what's going on, but in terms of knowing what, um, you know, what people in other countries really think about the um, Australian scene, especially when it's, you know, not just your band, but the whole thing, is a bit difficult to gauge, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see what, you know, what people are saying. I think we're finding um, a lot more sort of recently that people are sort of talking about, um, you know, the Australian sort of whatever scene it is and, um, you know, modular gets thrown out there as well. So, yeah, it's, it was, definitely seems to be something a bit more sort of catching on overseas. Mm. This thing's the coffee and weather. Good coffee, huh? Yeah, very good coffee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And how does it compare? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like a big thing to find a good coffee place here, I think. People yeah. always say, oh, that place does great coffee. Yeah. It's like a rarity. <laughs> we struggle pretty badly here. But I mean, it's not just here, it's everywhere else. Especially in the States, we struggle. That's, yeah, that's ridiculous. Oh, getting eaten by sharks. <laughs> <laughs> that 
Do you want to do? Well, Any near misses? Happy to our old bass player. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got eaten by it? Yeah. We used to be a four piece. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. In it. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. No. <laughs>